Let's do another example to illustrate Zeeman splitting. By what frequency will the absorption lines of a doublet S1 half to a doublet P1 half transition be split in a magnetic field of 5 Tesla? You may recognize this. We just did this in the previous ex previous example. We saw that each one of these line or each one of these energy levels would be split into a doublet with a magnetic field. So just let's summarize here. Here we have the doublet S1 half. Initially, we have two energy levels here, and they're split by a magnetic field to give these two lines here, and also the doublet P one half two lines that's also split to give a two different energy levels here. Now, recall from a previous lecture that the energy level separation when you have so-called anomalous Zeeman splitting, splitting, which means to and from non-singlet states. Well, this is non-singlet states, so we're going to have to use this. The energy level splitting is the Lande G factor times the Bohr magneton times the magnetic field times the M sub J quantum number. So what does that mean? Well, that energy level splitting is how much the energy levels go up or down relative to the unperturbed energy levels. So these energy level splittings here, this corresponds to the delta E, which we said was G sub J mu sub B, B times M sub J. And the same way down here. Now what we have to do for each one of these is to determine what G sub J is, that's the Lande G factor, mu sub b, that's the Bohr magneton, that's a constant. b is the magnetic field given in the problem as 5 tesla. And m sub j is the quantum number of these various levels. Let's just write, refresh our memory what m sub j was. This was equal to plus 1 half and minus 1 half. Same way down here, plus 1 half and minus 1 half. So let's figure out what, what g sub j is. Well, we have that fairly complicated equation here, but we'll go ahead and use it. We need to know what J, S, and L are for each one of those. We'll assume this value of GE is about equal to 2 for that electron we're exciting. We'll say up for this state here for the 2P one half. G sub J is equal to J plus 1, J times J plus 1 J is one half, so this is one half times one half plus one plus next term in that is S, S plus one half. S is equal to, well if it's a doublet, S is equal to one half. This is one half times one half plus one plus that last factor, L, or sorry, minus, should be a minus there, minus L times L plus one. Well, let's make that a minus minus L here, it's a P, so that means L is equal to 1. This is 1, 1, my, 1 plus 1, divided by, here's 2 times J, 2 times J is 1 half, times J plus 1, so that's 1 half plus 1. And again, we're going to use the approximation that Landy G factor for an unpaired electron is 2. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so we're going to ignore this. And we put this into our calculators. Oh, uh, sorry, that should be... <laughs> oh, I got a little mixed up there. Uh, that comes out to be 2 thirds. Now for this state, we have a doublet S 1 half. And this time I'll put it down here. <laughs> G, G sub J is equal to, again, we have uh, S times S plus or what was it, first one term? Oh, we're using J first, so it's one half times one half plus one plus S. Again, it's a doublet, so S is still one half, one half, one half plus one minus L. Here, L is equal to zero, so zero, zero plus one. And then we divide this by two times J, one half, times j plus 1, 1 half plus 1. This comes out to be 2. So now we've determined for this 
what g sub j is, is two-thirds. And when you do the same kind of calculation for this energy level separation, we use a g sub j equal to two. So let's go on with this calculation. Let's look for the triplet, sorry, triplet is a single, a doublet, doublet p one-half. Delta E there will be the G sub J for that state times the Bohr magneton times the magnetic field times M sub J. Well, we just said that the G factor was two thirds for this state. The nuclear Bohr magneton, that's a constant, that's a 9.27 times 10 to the minus 24th. B was 5 Tesla given in the problem. M sub J is 1 half. What are we doing? We're doing this energy level separation. So M sub J is 1 half. And that comes out to be, let's express this in terms of frequency so that our X axis on our spectrum will be frequency. So to change that to frequency, we're going to divide this by Planck's constant. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th, all in SI units. This comes out to be uh, 70 gigahertz. Now, okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that this energy level separation expressed in terms of frequency is 70 gigahertz. So let's do the same calculation here, what this energy level separation is for the doublet S1 half. Delta E will be equal to G sub J, which we found for the doublet's S state was 2 times 9 Bohr magneton, 9.27 times 10 to the minus 24th. Magnetic field, 5. J, M sub J, 1 half. Let's divide by Planck's constant to convert to giga, or to convert to uh, hertz. 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th. If we wanted to convert this to radian per second, we divide by h bar instead of h, but we're going for hertz. And this comes out to be 23 gigahertz. This energy level, energy level separation here from there to there is 23 gigahertz. And note that the total energy here is 46, double that. Now let's see what we can predict for the spectrum. Let's draw our spectrum here. This will be intensity versus frequency. With these calculations, let's summarize what's going on. We had the doublet P one half state, and we had the doublet S one half state. We said that in the absence of magnetic field, there'll be some energy level here and some energy level here. But when we apply the magnetic field, these degenerate energy levels here split into two energy levels and the energy level separation we calculated here was 70 gigahertz and the energy level we calculated here separation was also 70 gigahertz. Same way with the triplet or sorry the doublet S1 half this went up this way and this went down this way and we calculated that this energy level separation in gigahertz was 23 gigahertz, so 2, and also this separation here is 23 gigahertz. Now with these numbers let's try to predict what the spectrum will look like and give actually values on the x-axis for frequency. And let's actually look at the shifts relative to the frequency we would get, call that omega zero, if the system were not perturbed. So we're going to look at shifts around this omega zero. So here this will be intensity up this way, and this will be frequency this way. And we'll put a dotted line here right at omega zero, and we don't see a peak there because, well, we don't have energy levels at the unperturbed level. They go up and down. All right, so let's look at this transition here, going from there to there. Well, it looks like relative to the unperturbed system, this has gone one way, so the energy of the excited state has gone down by 70 gigahertz, but the energy of the ground state also has gone down by 23 gigahertz. Looks like the actual transition will be at the difference between this here will be the difference between 23 gigahertz and 70 gigahertz. 
So this will be shifted down. Let's look at this here. This will be at a lower frequency. It'll be shifted 70 gigahertz plus 23 gigahertz. So here, we'll ex expect a peak there. And that will be shifted away from that as 70 plus 23 gigahertz. Now we do the same thing. Well, let's look at this one. This one going all the way up here. So this will be larger, it'll be higher frequency corresponding to this shift plus that shift. So we should see one way down here at 70 plus 23 gigahertz. That's shifted up. And then we should see another one that will be corresponding from here to here, running out of room. You can sort of see that. That will be shifted here, this will be shifted 70 uh, minus 23 gigahertz. So that's the spectrum we would observe along with the shifts from the unperturbed uh, transition here.